Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so uh, what I wanted to do in this video was just go over some of the things that we went over today in class. Namely, we began something called a DBQ, which is a document-based question. Um, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start you off with how to get to the DBQ online project uh, through Clever. And then I'm going to walk you through some of the main tools that you can use in your DBQ. I'll do a brief overview of what a DBQ is. And after that, um, I will... I'll sign us off by just giving you a heads up of where we're going with it and uh, invite you to come to my office hours in case you have any questions for me. So uh, the first thing that we did today was that we introduced a DBQ. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to show you and start off by showing you how to get there. So the first thing you're going to do is log into Clever. Okay. Um, now these are, my Clever is going to look a little bit different from yours because I'm a teacher. And so I have a teacher dashboard versus a student one, but it's mostly the same. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down. If you haven't done so already, you're going to scroll down to ACPS resources and you're going to go, they're all in alphabetical order, which is very helpful. You're going to scoot over until you run into the DBQ project. It's going to be this big red square. Um, and it's going to say DBQ client. You're going to click on that. Now, before you do so, I am going to tell you to please uh, favorite it. Click on the little heart. Uh, once you do so, it will shoot up to your favorites and it'll be right up here. Please do this because we are going to be utilizing DBQs throughout the year. And I want to make sure that you have easy access to it and you don't have to scroll through and find it. So once you heart it, you're going to click on it. Oh, let's see here. Now, mine is going to look, again, a little bit different from yours, but that's not a here nor there. Um, when you click on it, it's going to see whatever class period you are. So right now I have periods one, five, and three on here. I haven't loaded up the other classes yet. Um, so let's say you're in period five and you click on it and you'll see your period five and you'll see a little uh, title that says Cabeza de Vaca, how did he survive? And then you'll see a view button, a blue view. You won't see the manage, you won't see version, you won't see number of students, you won't see any of this stuff. You'll just see the name of the document and the view button. You're gonna click on the view button and it'll bring you to this screen. Now, this version of it, uh, I actually have a teacher version and a student version. I'm in the student version side. So you will have, this is gonna look identical to what you see on yours, all right? So what you have here is a title. Now, a DBQ is a document-based question. So we are asking you a historical question, Gabese de Vaca, how did he survive? And we're gonna analyze this question and come up with our answer to this question based off of some documents here um, that I'm going to um, go over with you in a moment, at least mention to you. We'll start reviewing them in class later, okay? Um, so the overview is on June 17, 1527, Cabeza de Vaca sailed from the Spanish mainland with 600 settlers to establish colonies on the northern shores of the Gulf of Mexico. The trip went badly, and within a year, nearly all the men in the expedition were dead. This mini queue is about Cabeza's eight-year struggle to stay alive and his remarkable journey from Florida to the Texas coast and eventually to Mexico City. So what we're gonna do is try to figure out exactly how he survived this eight year period. And we're gonna do that by reviewing uh, four different documents. Documents A, Cabezas track across Texas and Mexico, it's a map. Document B, the art of survival, it's a chart. Um, and then the last two, which is document C, the surgeon, which is a painting or a, a drawing. And document D is we came from where the sun rose, which is, a recording of some conversations that Native Americans had them, with themselves about Cabeza de Vaca, comparing him to other people. Okay, um, we are not going to do anything with these documents quite yet, but overall what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be analyzing the first two, which are, are secondary sources, and the last two, which are primary sources. And we're going to use those documents to answer this question. And how we're going to answer it is in the format of a five-paragraph essay. Now that might sound a little intimidating to some of you. It's not it, it's not that big a deal um, could, because we're going to be doing this first DBQ together. Now, if we were in school, you wouldn't be doing this online. You would be doing this on paper. However, um, we don't have that option now. So what we are going to be doing, um, I am going to treat it like we are in school though, and I am going to be doing this in the format of um, us doing it together as a class. So throughout the year, we have to do uh, three DBQs. Um, the first one, this one, is that I really kind of walk you through it and we do it all together. We do all the questions together. We do all the uh, analysis together and we do all the outlining together. So we do everything together as a class. So you guys have a really in-depth knowledge of how to do it. And as the year progresses, I'm going to get you guys to be a little bit more independent by the last one that we do at the end. The third one, I'm going to 
give you guys a very basic overview of it, and then I'm going to turn you loose. For this first one, let's not worry too much about it, all right? So very brief overview on DBQs. We are going to be discussing them more in class. So if you have any other questions that I'm not covering here, either ask in class, ask during office hours, or I'll probably end up just answering it later on. Um, so there's a couple tools in here that we are going to be utilizing, and I want to make you aware of them so you can... Um, use them in the future, all right? So the first thing is that I do have um, quite a few students who uh, are more comfortable reading in Spanish, which is an option for you. So if you click up here in the task bar, it says view Spanish. If you click on it, every single page that you have access to will be translated into Spanish as, long as, as well as all the questions as well. It's a very useful tool. So um, you can't write on this. However, uh, you at least can read it and then answer the questions as, as, as necessary. That's the first thing. Uh, the second is the entire DBQ is done online. So all the writing, all the analysis, all of the um, uh, question writing, everything is done on here in one little area. So you don't have to go elsewhere and jot down notes and all that stuff. It's actually very, very convenient. However, there are certain sections, namely the first assignment that we did today in class, in which there is no place for you to actually write. So I'm going to show you some of the tools. They're called annotation tools uh, in which you can access to actually add your own uh, notes and answers to questions in places where there is no space for you to actually do so. So I'm going to start off with um, freehand. Then there's something called sticky note, uh, te plain text, oval, and then I'll go over the rest of them. So these, these are the ones that are going to be the most important. I'll start off with freehand. Freehand is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it is a drawing tool that you can use to right all over your um, thing, okay? Uh, you can use it to circle things. Uh, you can use it to um, underline things, whatever, in any color you want to. Uh, I am not a big fan of it because it's a little unwieldy. Uh, you can use it if you wish. You're, it's not like I'm telling you you're not allowed to use it. I don't really like it though because it's a little, um, it's, it's just not as neat and tidy as I would like, but that's me. Okay, the next thing that you have here is access to the sticky note. This is more of like a post-it. So in case you see something here in the margin that you read and you say, ooh, you know what? I need to remember this. So remember paragraph uh, two, all right? And then you click it and there it is. It's right there on the page and it's saved there for you, okay? Um, something that you may wanna utilize just to give yourself a quick note, okay? Um, now. There's a couple of tools on this too, on the sticky note, and this goes for the other ones as well. First, you can choose to write or have any color that you want here. I could care less about the color. Um, you don't want to use a white sticky note because it doesn't make any sense, or, or you can use a black one if you'd like to. It doesn't really matter. Any one that you want to use is fine. Um, these buttons down here where my cursor is, the large A is to make the font bigger. Uh, the small A is to make the spot smaller. Whatever you want to do is fine. Uh, and then you have a trash can over here, which is delete this uh, annotation, this sticky note. Um, in addition, if you want to make a copy of it, you can click it and it'll bring up another copy for you as you will. Okay. Uh, over here, there is a square. If you grab that square and move it around, you can make the box bigger, skinnier, wider, longer. Whatever you guys want to do is fine. There's a diamond up on top. If you take that, it's a rotational tool. So you can rotate it however you wish. Doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to do with it, it's fine. Okay, that's the sticky note. Next is, this is going to be very, very useful for, the, for you as well. This is a text box, just a plain old text box. When you guys are going to do the, um, what do we do in class today? My Lord, uh, I'm, it's a little late right now. Uh, the hook exercise where you have to answer questions, which I'm going to review with the rest of this video in a moment. Um, you are going to have to create a text box. This operates the same way as a sticky note. So you can make it bigger, wider. However, it's it's opaque or something. It's not opaque. It's it's it'll um, you can actually type through it like this. Uh, and you know my answer is you know whatever it is, right? So you can type in it and then you click out of it and it stays there for you. Um, this is probably pretty good for writing answers to questions. Everything else applies. You can make it wider. You can make it shorter. You can rotate it however you want. It's fine. Um, you, can all, you can also change the font as well uh, in terms of the color of the font. Uh, you can make it whatever you want. I don't care. Uh, 
just obviously you can't use white it won't it won't show up on here all right but other than that's fine uh the oval this is not a writing tool this is for more like circling things or seeing things that you might find useful and so you can use it to maybe put a circle around something you think is important um you want to remember something uh you can use that same thing goes for the square it's the exact same thing uh you can put a square over something rather than oval it doesn't really matter um this filled square, uh, this is actually pretty useful for like highlighting. So in case you see something you want to do, maybe a line or a sentence or a quote, um, you can actually change it and highlight it, uh, make it bright so you guys can see it and remember it if you want to do that. Uh, that's another tool that you can use. The last one over here, um, the rest of this is like an, a line where you can use underline things. And you can, of course, stretch it out. You can make it skinnier. You can rotate it however you want to do it. It's fine. This is an arrow. Uh, so if you want to remember something and kind of point to it, um, you can do so. You can kind of angle it out if you want to as well, point at things that you think are important, uh, any color you want. And lastly is the bucket. Don't worry about this. Uh, there is a, a strategy that we're going to be using in the process of creating this DBQ called we're going to be, it helps us organize our paragraphs. It's called bucketing, coming up with topic sentences and stuff like that. Don't worry about utilizing this tool over here the bucket until we get to it. And I will give you instruction on how to use it properly. Uh, it's something very specific that you are not going to utilize outside of that process. And we'll, when we get to that, we'll review it in class. All right. Uh, lastly, on this page that I'm going to show you is how to navigate the DBQ. So if you'll notice over here where my cursor is, there's an arrow that says next page over here. And this one is a, a previous page. Okay. If you want to move forward a page or two, click on the arrow. Okay, very, very simple. Okay, uh, if you want to keep on going, you can keep clicking through the arrows through the entire DBQ if you'd like to. Uh, there is a faster way of navigating though. If you go over here where it says cover, this means the covered page. If you click on this uh, and you click on any one of these, this will bring you instantly to the other, any page that you want to in the entire DBQ. So as you're working on this, let's say you were at the student essay section where we're getting close to being finished and you want to review something, maybe an, an, uh, a sticky note that you wrote on document B or even on the hook exercise, you can just click on that and just go over here to the hook exercise and go straight to it, okay? Um, so you can utilize that. It's a really nice way of moving around uh, the DBQ, all right? So we are going to go to the next page uh, and I'm going to read to you the hook exercise. I'm going to explain it to you and then we'll be basically finished. Okay, so the hook exercise over here is what we did today in class. Now, we, you guys did this in breakout rooms um, and it seemed to work okay. I'm gonna read it to you and then I'm gonna show you guys about the text box and what to do with it. And then uh, we will, I'll show you one more thing and then we'll be all done, okay? So the hook exercise, Cabeza de Vaca. The hook exercise is, is a, is something that we can use to help you kind of put your mindset in the actual historical period. So you're putting yourself in the uh, in the situations that Gabesa de Vaca faced in his trek. And all the DDQs that we're gonna do are gonna have a hook exercise to kind of get you interested and kind of get you thinking in this mindset. So here are your instructions. Uh, below are three common dangers that face Native Americans and European explorers in Mexico in the 16th and 17th centuries. With a partner or in a small group, discuss each situation and what you might have done to stay alive. When finished, answer the summary question. So you have danger one, danger two, and danger three, and then your summary. I'm gonna read through these dangers for you. Danger number one, Gulf Coast mosquitoes. You are wandering, lost and alone in the swampy wetlands off San Antonio Bay on the Gulf of Mexico. With every step, the thick mud sucks on your bare feet. You have a piece of flint, some deer meat for food, and are wearing nothing but a small deerskin hide. The June sun is setting and swarms of mosquitoes recover your body, entering your nostrils and mouth with every breath. You are desperate. What do you do? Be specific. So this is what will you do? Now, is there really a wrong answer here? Not really. It's really what would you do in this situation? I mean, there's certain things that you can't do. You can't, you know, run away or I mean, that's not going to work. You have to deal with this. So how are you going to deal with it? So what you're going to do in this situation right now to start off to answer this question is that you're going to click on the text box or plain text rather. Yep, but this is the text box. I would stretch it out. I would kind of maneuver it a little bit, kind of move it around, um, make it nice and big. 
because the expectation is that you are answering all of these incomplete sentences. Proper capitalization, proper punctuation. I'm not looking for bullet points. I'm not looking for uh, one word answers here. That's not gonna fly. Complete sentences, please, okay? And then you're gonna type out your answer here. And then you're gonna, whatever. You're gonna do whatever you decide to do, how you're gonna survive this. Now I'm gonna delete it. But for every single one of these situations, you are gonna create a text box and answer it in the text box. Next. Danger number two, armed strangers. You are trekking alone in the dry prickly pear region of Southeast Texas. The prickly pear at cactus fruit is the only food you have eaten in 10 days. The pickings have been thin. As you are making your evening fire with your precious flint, a band of six hunters suddenly appears. They are carrying spears, but no game. Um, game is uh, meat uh, from an animal that you have hunted. Okay, so it's um, deer, uh, could be rabbits, anything like that would be game, all right? Uh, like you, their ribs show clearly through their skin. They are speaking in an unknown uh, language. They look at you sternly and motion for you to drop your flint and pile of precious fruit and to walk away into the cold 40 degree night. What do you do? Lastly, danger number three, river crossing. You are one of two survivors of a Spanish expedition that has shipwrecked off the Gulf Coast of Texas. Together, you decide to walk 400 miles down the coast to the closest Spanish outpost. One huge problem is that you must cross a deep river nearly 200 yards wide, and neither of you knows how to swim. You have seen signs of native people in the area, a fishnet here, a footprint there, and are terrified of shipboard tales of cannibalism. What do you do? Create your text box, answer the question, and then the summary is, which of these situations scares you the most? Explain your answer, another text box. Okay, so that's what we did today in class. The expectation that this will be complete by Thursday. Now you had about 15 minutes or so to do it in class. So if you did not finish, then Thursday you wanna get it done. We're gonna review these, we're gonna discuss them, and then we're gonna move on to the background essay. So I don't really want you moving on to the background essay until we review this, because I want to control how quickly we move through this, because I really wanna make sure that you guys get it before you move on to the next part, okay? I am going to show you the background essay because there's one little feature in here that's really cool that I like, um, and I'm going to show it to you right now, but you don't have to move on to this section yet. This would be the audio support. So for a lot of the different documents and the background essays, they actually do uh, have a person that can, is able to read this to you. So if you click on this little button, I'm not going to, um, but if you do, it is actually going to read you the essay. Now, if you need that, great. Some people just like hearing it and listening to stories or reading somebody reads them more than they like reading themselves, or you want to have somebody follow along with you. However you want to do it, if you don't want to utilize it, that's fine, you don't have to, but it's there for you to use if you would like, all right? Um, so this hook exercise done by Thursday, and that is essentially it. So please, if you have any further questions for me, and let me stop the share. So if you have any further questions for me at all, please just let me know. Um, come see me during office hours, 2.30 to 3 o'clock. Uh, and that's open. You can you don't need an appointment. If you want to come in a little bit later, 3 to 3.30, that is by appointment only. So just shoot me an email. Let me know that you want to come by and I'd be happy to see you. If those times don't work for you, um, please, again, don't just shrug your shoulders and say, well, that's not the time, so I can't meet with them. No, not okay. You have to let me know. Then I will make myself available at another time um, so I can meet with you. I have met students later on, 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, I have done that. It's rare because most of you guys can make it during those times. But if you run into stuff in a situation where you cannot, please let me know so then we can make arrangements, okay? Um, that being said, that's it. Um, if I did not, if you have another question that I did not cover in this video, no worries, just send me an email or stop by during the office hours and ask away and I'd be happy to help you. So have a good evening and I will see you all later.